Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Did COVID Lockdowns Affect Air Pollution? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal PNAS, published on August 11, 2020. Research conducted by Xander Venter and colleagues from the Terrestrial Ecology section at the Norwegian Institute for Nature Research. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Air pollution harms people's health. During the first few months of the global COVID-19 pandemic, many countries went into lockdown. Many adults worked from home, children went to school online, and families limited their trips outside of the home. Fewer trips outside meant fewer cars on the road and planes in the air. We wanted to know whether the change in people's driving and flying habits resulted in better air quality. Using satellites, weather stations, and traffic data, we found out that it did. Introduction. Have you ever seen brown air over a city? When people burn fuel in cars, homes, and factories, the smoke and exhaust go into the air. Breathing in pollutants can irritate your throat and lungs. People who live in places with poor air quality are more likely to get sick. About 7 million people die every year because of poor air quality. Air pollution can come from human activity or from natural sources. Power plants, factories, traffic, and farms are examples of human-caused air pollution. Air quality can also be bad during natural events like dust storms, forest fires, and volcanic eruptions. Knowing where pollution is coming from helps us know how we can fix it. Here in Figure 1, which you'll see again on the next page, is a diagram of natural and human-made sources of air pollution. As you can see, natural sources of air pollution include forests, wildfires, volcanoes, and lightning, while human-made sources include oil and gas, fertilizer, livestock, cities, industry, power plants, sewage treatment, and methods of transportation like cars, trucks, buses, motorcycles, and airplanes. At the beginning of the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic, many countries went into lockdown. During lockdowns, people had to stay home as much as possible. In some places, people notice clearer skies and cleaner air. Is it possible that this change in how much people and goods moved around makes the air quality better? To answer this question, we needed to know, one, was the amount of air pollution lower during lockdowns than it would have been otherwise? And two, did places where people drove less also have less pollution? Here is a picture comparing the air quality around the National War Memorial in New Delhi, India, before and after the lockdown. The photo on the left was taken on the 17th of October, 2019, while the photo on the right was taken on the 8th of April, 2020. Types of pollution. Nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, comes from cars and other machines that burn fuel. Then it reacts with other chemicals in the air, forming smog, making ozone, and causing acid rain. Ozone forms naturally in the stratosphere, where it blocks harmful ultraviolet radiation, but when it's near the ground, it can cause breathing problems, especially for people with asthma. Ozone also makes it hard for plants to grow. Fine particulate matter, PM2.5, is a little different from NO2 and O3 because it's not just one specific chemical. Instead, PM2.5 refers to all particles smaller than 2.5 microns, that's 30 times smaller than the thickness of a human hair. Because the particles are so small, when you breathe them in, they can go into the nooks and crannies of your lungs. They can even make it into your bloodstream. Breathing in too many of these particles can cause health problems like asthma, coughing, and irregular heartbeat. Depending on the source, they can also damage the environment. PM2.5 mostly forms from chemical reactions in the air as gases like nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and sulfur dioxide mix. Here is figure one again, showing natural and human-made sources of air pollution. Methods. We focused on three different pollutants. One, nitrogen dioxide, or NO2. Two, ozone, or O3. And three, fine particulate matter, PM2.5. We measured the concentration of each pollutant using data from satellites and weather stations. Satellite data let us measure the average over entire countries. The weather stations are usually in cities and measure the concentration at ground level. 
Air pollution is affected by the weather. We wanted to make sure that any differences that we saw during COVID lockdowns actually came from lockdowns and not just from the weather being different. So we kept track of how air pollution responds to changes in temperature, wind, rain, and humidity. We used that information to calculate the amount of pollution we would expect for each day. We also needed to know how much people were driving. Google and Apple both made human mobility data available to anyone who wanted it. Google's data told us how many people were going to and from work. Apple's data told us how often people searched for driving directions. We assumed that if people look up driving directions less, they are also driving less. Results. We found that during lockdown events, one, NO2 concentrations went down by 60%. Two, PM2.5 concentrations went down by 31%. And three, ozone went up in some places and down in other places. We found that NO2 concentrations decreased when people drove less. We did not see a relationship between driving and ozone or PM2.5 concentrations. Which pollutant had the biggest change after the beginning of lockdown? Can you tell how long the lockdown lasted? How? Here in figure two, you can see the concentration of NO2, O3, and PM2.5 since the start of lockdown compared to the expected amount. We calculated the expected amount using pollution and weather measurements from the previous three years. The solid lines show the pollution level during lockdown. The dashed lines show the expected amount, and the gray band shows the range of likely pollution levels. The graph for NO2 is on the left, O3 is in the middle, and PM2.5 is on the right. Each individual graph shows the concentration of the pollutant on the y-axis and the number of days relative to the start of lockdown on the x-axis, which is shown by the vertical red dotted lines. Discussion. Poor air quality can happen for lots of reasons. It's important to think about what makes each country and community unique. Although we saw clear reductions in NO2 and PM2.5 overall, there were differences from place to place. Lockdown orders resulted in people driving less. Many small businesses and factories stopped working, but power plants, farms, and some other kinds of industry kept going. So, in places where exhaust from gas-powered cars, trucks, and buses make up a large part of the air pollution, lockdowns lowered emissions a lot. But in places where air pollution is mostly from power plants or farms, lockdowns didn't result in lowered air pollution. In Thailand and Australia, PM2.5 levels went up in 2020. That's probably because wildfire smoke increased air pollution more than lockdowns decreased it. Ozone decreased in some places and increased in others. Ozone chemistry is more complicated than NO2 chemistry. Ozone stays in the air longer. Depending on what else is in the air and how sunny it is, chemical reactions in the air can either form new ozone molecules or break them apart. Conclusion. Nobody wants to have another lockdown. Having to stay inside makes it hard to stay connected with friends and family, and it makes it hard for people to do their jobs. Up to the current moment in the COVID pandemic, more than 200 million people have gotten sick, and more than 4 million people have died. It is a tragedy that we will remember for the rest of our lives. Air pollution also causes millions of people to get sick and die every year. Some of that is due to indoor air pollution, such as smoky, open fire stoves. Bad air quality outside can come from smokestacks, vehicles, and forest fires. Our results show that if we change the way we get around, we can enjoy better air quality. When you choose to walk or bike, you are helping your community have cleaner air. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.